We are petting cats in three, two, one. Hello, everyone, and thanks for tuning in to the Guardian Hub Podcast. This is episode number 244, where we talk Destiny, our love of the game, and we talk other games also. Gaming news, uh, I don't know. I was just coming up with that on the fly. It's not our, necessarily our new tagline, but uh, welcome, Sin. How are you doing this lovely evening? Oh, surprisingly, okay. Are you? It's not like you were coughing up a lung still. I am. I am. I still have a little bit of congestion, but I'm battling through it. And nonetheless, I'm here. Well, that is good. That is good. And um, anything else interesting about work or life? No. Status quo at the moment. Kids are getting over some sickness. Wife and uh, little uh, littlest uh, both found out they had strep uh, two days ago. So I don't know if that's on top of whatever viral thing, coronavirus, flu-like thing that was going around. But uh, yeah. Oh, yeah, it can be. That's why you want to avoid viruses, because they often lead to infections. (laughs) It's not not like you could just say, hey, I see a virus walking down the hallway, and you're just like, I'm not going to like walk next to them. Well, avoid the virus affecting you as much. There's things you can do. (laughs) Like? A vaccine. (laughs) No. <laughs> you asked. <laughs> but in all fairness, vaccines are not a end-all, be-all because there are, in reality, different variants. And that that really doesn't mean anything. I mean, you can get it and still get whatever sickness is going around because of those different variants. I know that, but it's not that simple. You get the vaccine and then you get way less symptoms and it doesn't lead to infections. Yeah, I know, yada, yada. You build up your antibodies and tolerances and whatnot. Yeah. No, I get yeah. it. And you get way less infections, and then you can recover quicker, and you won't get infections afterwards. And, uh, yeah. But so it helps. In all fairness, we, know, we don't know what it is, so that's a million different things it could be. Yeah, yeah, yeah. A lot of people are beginning uh, just the regular flu again this year, too. I always get the flu shot. I've been doing it forever. And, uh, yeah, I got both, um, recently too, but I heard that if you do a neti pot every week, you'll never get sick. Uh, compliments of Gator, that tip right there. Have you heard that tip? Oh, are you talking about the 1930s version neti pot? No, I don't think so. I, I didn't even know if there was a 1930s version. It's like an old term. Like nobody uses that anymore. Like, I don't even know what it is. Oh, like, I've heard of do. people putting like I onions have one. and garlic and boiling water. No, 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 all no. over it's, your head. No, no. Yeah, it's not that. It's actually a, it's a, it's a today's term. It really is. I have one myself too. It's those little things where it's not just the steam. You're literally pouring water and it's warm and saline. So it doesn't feel weird in your nose, but you pour it in one nostril, you tilt your head sideways, and then it goes through the sinuses and out the other nostril. That's so, kind of gross. And thanks to Rodimus for posting in my DM a TikTok of some nasty signage <laughs> But gross. seriously, if you, once you try it, you've never breathed as well in your life as you have before. <laughs> it clears everything out. You, you, <laughs> would you rather have the gross stuff stuck in you or out of you? <laughs> no, so, I get yeah. it. No, I yeah. get it. And if yeah. you really want to know, the drainage that is coming out when I blow my nose is green, so... Yep, that's infection. <laughs> that's bacteria. Yes. Yep. I know. Oof. Well, I hope you feel better quickly. Um, there are good news, too, on the infection front, because a lot of people have been getting infections the last several years that, um, uh, what's the drugs used for treating infections? Um, uh, antibiotics. It, antibiotics have been less effective because... Um, 
you know, infections know how to change just kind of like viruses a little bit. And, but the good news is medical research just found a new type of antibiotic that can combat that now, which at least for the next several years. I don't know what the name is, but it's really good news because of the scary news until this got invented was um, antibiotics were becoming less effective. But now the good news is they come out with a new type that's effective again. So really, really good news on that. I know stuff because my family's in my uh, father in law's a general practitioner, doctor, and medical research is like a big thing that we're into. So we kind of keep up with all that stuff. Decent. Yeah. What um, about new with you otherwise? Well, other than the, uh, the podcast that brings you antibiotic news. Not much otherwise. I feel like with some breaks that we took, um, it's weird. D- does this like feel like we just barely talk, but then also we haven't talked in a long time? I don't know how to explain it. Yeah, kind of. Um, I mean, shout out again. I mean, anyone we, didn't listen to the last episode, check out. We had Miner as a guest. I mean, not Miner. Not Miner. Oh, my Frostbite. gosh. Frostbite. Because Miner, I was reading right then what he was writing. Frostbite. Frostbite. We've had Miner as a guest before, too. Frostbite, the lost episode, version 1.5. He's back in action. <laughs> So I was thinking after the episode, it's amazing how much time has gone by. We've been podcasting a little over four years, and he's now in college doing his internship. But I remember, and I believe it was him, he was one of the youngest members of Discord when we first started. Oh, are you sure you're not mixing him up with another guy, too, that we used to play with, Skull Reaper? Maybe. Yeah. But he is, I believe, Frostbite is one of the youngest. Valid, valid point still. Yeah, people grow up. I know Lumina too was younger and I don't even know how old Lumina is now. Gosh. This is the podcast where we, uh, we bring in some member berries. How old are you, Sin? (laughs) You don't have to tell your age. A gentleman never tells, right? No, it's fine. Next month I turn 39. Woot woot. You old ass. Oh, (laughs) there he is. (laughs) <laughs> perfect time to join in and give a little jab i mean Absolutely. i'm older but then i'm younger than mr monkey and then he's younger than gator so there you go <laughs> i'm older than sin but i know i'm younger than kingsley so. there you go so it goes sin rodimus kingsley monkey gator <laughs> sin did you at least watch the tiktoks you can see all the green snot no 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 and no. i've seen them before and i don't really want to watch them again oh you should watch them because it's, they do it with the kids and the kids reactions are funny so speaking That's of gotta watching be a stuff for kids actually because if you yeah. at least do it to yourself you can control how like the first time if you're not sure start it softer you know but I can see like a parent just jamming it with the kids and like here we go <laughs> you know I didn't view that TikTok yet because I wasn't sure if it was gonna like blast on the podcast or something <laughs> right I doubt it will but it would distract me either way have you ever used a neti pot? <laughs> Rodimus. I have not, but after watching that video, I kind of want to go get one just to see how well it works. It works well, I'm telling you. Um, the thing about, so it's not just for, I know, I, I'm talking up like Gator was on one of his episodes recently, but of course, if you have a lot of congestion, it can help with that, but also just every day, even when you aren't sick or whatever, it gets like the dust out of your nostrils and sinuses and stuff, and <laughs> If you have like minor allergies, especially nasal ones, it can help a lot with uh, feeling better. Uh, make sure you use distilled water. Yes. And not definitely. tap water. <laughs> yeah, because. <laughs> Do you know why, Sin? Or germs and bacteria? Uh, no, not necessarily. What can happen in tap water, but it's very rare. You would have to live more in a podunk town, but still to be like safe. Like Flint, but... Michigan. Yeah, right. But. There has been a couple rare instances of someone getting an amoeba brain eating disease from the city water. Gross. Yeah. <laughs> Don't scare Sin off. We gotta get in the I know. Now we're scaring him. He won't want to do it. <laughs> yeah, but oh, see, people that use the excuse of like the less than 1% thing that can happen. Uh, yet they drive on the road every day, and that's way more than a 1% chance you'll get in an accident. So there you go. Uh, so speaking of watching stuff, not not referring to this TikTok because I'm not going to watch it right now. <laughs> um, so I started listening to, uh, shout out to GDC, by the way. I started listening to the top 10 episode, and I had to put it down 
because Gator and Native Raider were talking about their top 10 movies. And one of the, uh, I think they started like at the lowest of the tier, but Native had mentioned a movie called uh, Let Us Leave Earth or something like that, or Leave Earth Behind. It's on Netflix. And it was okay, but man, was it weird in some parts. And the way it ended is BS, let me tell you. Mm. I did get some good tips from listening to that. And shout out, by the way, that's the Guardian Downcast. Uh, in case anyone listening is newer here and weren't sure what podcast then was talking about. Good friends of the show, part of the Al Sector Alliance. Um, what about some of the other ones on the list? Uh, did you get any other ideas? No, I, I wanted... stopped right there because I wanted oh, to watch right. them yeah, and I didn't want to yeah. I didn't want to forget them. And there's like so much that I really want to catch up on. And it's just with my lack of time, I, I got to find ways to squeeze it in. And I, I watched that movie last night when the kids went to okay. bed. So mixed reviews is how you would give it? I thought the middle part was good. Very doomsday like, um, you know, kind of give you the subtext of what it's about. Hackers basically take over America and everything starts falling apart. But the way it ended for me just was not good. And they use like really eerie, creepy music the entire time. Like for an effect, I get the effect they were going for, but it was a little much. Hmm. But I thought the character progressions were good. I thought the initial story throughout the movie was good. Ending and some like nuances with it, not so good. I'll have to go check that out. Yeah, the the sci-fi movie one was the one that I was really interested in um, with Gemma Chan. It's called The the Creator. That's the one that I want to see. I don't know if anyone's seen that or heard of that. I think it's on Hulu only. Um, I don't have Hulu, so if anybody out there wants to give me their their creds, send them. Hit my DMs. Maybe. We'll talk afterwards. (laughs) 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 I mean, what? No. But I've been um, a month. You can have it. There you go. I don't know if you guys have been watching anything else. I've been restarting um, from the very first episode. The Wi-Fi. I've been watching the X Files. So that's fun to kind of watch that again. Uh, I've been watching Reacher. I've started that. So yeah, a lot of people are into that. That's a popular one. Have you been all up to date on it before the new season? Yes, I am up to date. Uh, the new episode dropped about two hours ago, so I'll be watching that when I get off the computer. Nice. Nice. I picked up the uh, Percy Jackson show on uh, Disney+. Plus. It's okay. I kind of very, very much like the movies, these first few episodes. But uh, not bad. Right Never on. saw Reacher. I haven't either. I... I need to. I'm down. It's just I, I like always it. prefer. Yeah, I always prefer. I mean, I say this, and I'm watching X Files, but that's with the wife. But like, if I'm going to watch something on my own, I'd actually prefer a comedy over an action show. It just seems like the action shows are such a kind of a slog to get through at times. Not like they're not exciting. Obviously, they're exciting, but I just want something more lighthearted. <laughs> I'm like going to bed. This or one something was, like that. I would say this is more like a action drama because they're actually trying to figure some stuff out like a detective okay. series with action so it can kind of calm down at times and not be crazy it can be yes and there's some like getting to know the characters and stuff and like what they're looking for and you got to kind of put the puzzles together and stuff like that yeah but honestly most of the time when i'm getting ready for bed i just watch uh, um south park <laughs> <laughs> I've never watched that all the way through, and I'm like in episode or season eleven now. <sighs> it's that's an it's interesting fun. one to watch. If I like, honestly, you get to you get a chance to watch some of that stuff with your wife. If I waited for my wife to watch stuff, I would literally watch nothing. No, <laughs> I I know, and same. I we rarely watch shows together, and it's just X Files. We kind of started the last thing before that was like maybe a half a year or a year ago, like watching. Um, not Breaking Bad, but the other one, Better Call Saul, together. But um, we had some time during Christmas and kind of started it, and we're trying to keep it going. Um, but we're only on season three, barely, and there's 10, 11 seasons of X-Files. <laughs> so that's going to take a hot second. It's going to take a good minute. Oh, yes. 
No, it's fun to talk about um, TV movie stuff, um, games. I think I talked about Avatar a little bit um, in the last episode. Uh, shortly here coming up, I'll definitely be checking out. I don't expect to spend too much time with it, but the new Prince of Persia game coming out. Um, we'll get to Destiny in a second. Any other... Probably not Sin, because you don't have time barely even for Destiny, <laughs> but Rodimus, anything else no, you've tried? I've just playing Cyberpunk, trying to do all the side quests in that game. Ooh, trying to do I like know 100% I keep saying of it. it. Uh, do, you, do you happen to have a feeling of how far through you are on the DLC? Um, I am to the point where I can go in and do the final mission on the basic um, mm-hmm. game. I haven't oh, really okay. started the That's expansion. Right. Yeah. Um, and I just went back into Dogtown. So I think I'm on quest number two. There were quest number three okay, in there. Okay, so you, you have a so, lot to go on that. Yeah. Man, there's just so many exciting things to talk about in there. There's like a mission or so before. I won't spoil anything, but just really cool like visuals and like music. And then I'm visiting the, the guy in the wheelchair mission. is where I'm at right now. Wheelchair. Gosh, I don't remember that now. We but... go in there and he, he you let him hack or jack into you and you find oh the missing yeah. hacker or net runner yeah. that you're looking yeah. for. That's where I'm at in that part of the expansion. Man. I am so excited if they make another one down the road. Cause that game has been top notch. <clears throat> um yeah, and uh Hey Sin, you want to run the story mission? <laughs> I'm collecting. I've been running around collecting all the stuff that I missed. Apparently, I'm more than one week behind. Oh, well, well, well. I gotta defeat combatants and destroy Vex oracles in the Spina Carries, Harbinger Seclude, and Gardens of Acelia. So I don't know where that's at in the story. That's last week. Yeah, yeah. So two weeks behind. Apparently, <laughs> I just found out. Crow mentioned going through the. <laughs> There's the coughing. Crow mentioned going through the portal because he has the bond with Mara. I uh, just listened to that. Yeah, I mean we can. I mean, there's not going to be tons of Destiny to be talking about the next couple of weeks, so I guess we could save our reaction on the story finale, which was this week. But you're behind. If you want, we can save it for next week. Yeah, we could. Um, are we still not having a this week in Destiny, or did it finally come out? Dude, even if we did, that's no one cares about that shit. I'm just kidding. I think <laughs> no, it's I was, next I was week, legit. I think, they're coming out. Yeah, yeah was, it's next week. They should start again. They they said all along mid-Jan, so um, next week will be mid-January. <laughs> Man. Mid-January already. Time has flown. I know. It's sad, though. I'm already getting my tax forms. I'm like, ugh, I hate that stuff. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> <laughs> See, for me, I, I, I still save more money than the average person, but for me, I don't get a refund. I'm, I'm smart. I save my money ahead of time, and then I just pay the small amount that I owe to the government versus letting the government earn interest on my money and then getting it back. <laughs> but it's still a pain. I gotta, like, do a fat check here. Uh... I mean, I don't have to pay it until April, but it's like January, the forms start coming in. February, you ignore it. This is total normal for business owners. If you're a small business owner, let me know when you're listening to this podcast. March is when you have to submit an extension if you don't want to file in April like normal. Like, So if you're a small business owner set up as an S-Corp, which is well worth doing, even if it's just you, um, you save a lot in taxes, but you're supposed to put in your business return by mid-March, March 15th versus April 15th. There wasn't a twid. There was an update. Oh, we'll get to that there in a second. Update. Yep. Y'all just sorry. This story could be boring for people. But anyways, we push that off, and then we file in April and then pay the money at the last second because why would we want to pay early? <laughs> but uh, what was the update? <clears throat> uh, it looks like a lot of Crucible stuff. Oh, a lot yeah, of weapons. yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah. Do they make an article? I mean, yeah, you're right. They did post a lot of help or news items in the. I remember seeing in the Discord through the bot and stuff. Yeah, there is. Let's see here. if there's an article too to kind of TLDR it. But I did read something about Checkmate. They're putting back into Crucible Labs after making some changes. Mm-hmm. 
Oh, like a patch update file. Yeah, I mean, okay. I mean, that came out on the ninth. Whatever you guys want to come read I, about this. I mean, there's I'm kind of going through it right now. So, okay. Here's one thing I'm I'm mad about. This is they kept saying they were gonna, you know, do the sandbox different from PVE and PVP versions of the weapons, but the Thorn Catalyst because I heard it was OP in PVP. They changed the stats now. Now it's not 20 range and 10 stability anymore. It's 15 range and 5 stability. And it was just, across the board, not not just Crucible, right? I'm assuming because this is not under the PvP section. It just says weapons. And in the past, they would give a qualifier like PvP only. Uh, Root of Nightmares well. Raid, the Dep weapons are on a knockout large, logic now. Once every drop is unlocked, the drop becomes random. I mean, that's interesting. That's pretty cool. <clears throat> well, I guess what I was understanding, one of the streamers, they're taking people, doing the master for the first encounter, mm -hmm. and they're dropping red border weapons for the, for the adepts. Yeah. So that's, that's interesting, interesting about Root of Nightmares. Um, the Thorn thing, someone let us know if I'm incorrect on that. Because um, I heard Thorn was insane with the Catalyst, but... Um, let it stay insane. I mean, you would think if they, you know, t they at least tested a little bit, and I don't think that's going to be too OP in PVE, so I don't know. You guys went that way. Okay, I'm going the other way. Fireteam uh, Finder, we, we talked about this a little bit. Um, oh, and by the way, we're going to have an upcoming episode that's kind of a combo with uh, me and Kato from the Guardian Hub and Gator from Guardian Downcast. He puts out a podcast called destiny help desk but we we are coming out on an episode to help new and inexperienced players about rating and uh, we'll put that in this feed too uh, that was the agreement and um, but basically one of the things we were talking about a little bit even though joining up in raids is so much better through discords and the 100 bot and things like that fireteam finder is actually getting a lot of love from Bungie, even in this patch note, they fixed a couple things. Fished, fixed an issue where the nightfall activity selection was unavailable. I don't know, some battleground were featured. Fixed an issue where checkpoints were not respected for activities once summoned in Fire Team Finder. I've used it a little bit. The, I think the, the layout on it's pretty nice and it seems to work pretty well. Very nice. I have not I used not, it yet. So Yeah, okay. I haven't either. It's 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 so nice, and especially in the game, I don't see a reason to ever use the app because it just works really, really well in um, in game. It's probably even easier than the app. It's just laid out really nice. Yeah, I might have to check it out. I still have not tried it out, even though it's been in the game now for a little while. It's I used it the very first time. You know, Sin, we were talking about you want to run the exotic mission on Legend. I ran it with. Uh, that's what I first used the Fireteam Finder for, uh, LFG and that, and it worked pretty well. Gotcha. Maybe I'll end up having to do that. And just run it that way and uh, knock it out. Um, oh, and I'm a dum dum. I still can't get all my red borders for Apex or for, um, yeah, the rocket launcher from Last Wish, uh, Apex Predator. Is that what it's called? Yes. yes. Yeah. So I I have three of the patterns and you know you need five and I was just gonna finally just use the things from the season pass bar once I got one more to build it up. But the quest, the stupid quest, it's not like bounties when you finish them and you can hold on to the rewards forever. On the quest, if you finish the quest and don't turn it in that week, it goes away and you lose the reward. So I couldn't oh. pick I couldn't pick Apex Predator from I went back to Bird Lady. I wasn't in a rush because that night we were playing late and I'm like, yeah, I'll just go back later. And I guess I went back after the reset and then all of a sudden I was like, pick up the quest again, <laughs> like for a new week. I knew oh, you could only do the quest once per week, but I didn't know I, that the I reward that would either. go away. Yeah, yeah Kato knew that. Really and when I was explaining, he's like, nah, it does that. Dang. So, tip, tip for, for those that... Uh, 
if you run Last Wish with that quest, go back to Bird Lady right away and get your. Maybe Red try Warrior going Chi. to um just a checkpoint for uh, Shiro Chi and go backwards for that secret chest for the weapon. I haven't. Uh, are are people getting fairly good luck with red borders dropping there? Well, if not, you get the weapon you can do your deep side harmonizer on. Oh, even if it's not red border? Yeah. Hmm, yeah. Can Apex drop on that chest? Oh, yeah, because the secret chest, so it could be anything. Yep, anything. But either oh. that or just run more Last Wish. That too. I know. I've never done that thing, Rodimus. I know what you're talking about. People would do that all the time, but maybe just because I was rating legit, I just never had the desire to just go in solo, go to the wish hall, which was a slight pain, and then input the code and then go backwards. When I was leveling up all my exotics, I just was using the Shiro Chi checkpoint and just yeah. every week doing a couple of exotics a week and just kind of jumped there to get the quest or the, the box. Yeah. I know so, some people, when they've done that for a while and they haven't really done the raid, they're more used to going backwards in that area than the normal way, <laughs> the forward way. Yeah. I mean, we did the raid to get the eggs for uh, Kato and I, because Kato and I are working right. on the Creamy City title. Remember when we did all that sin back in the day? <laughs> all the Dreaming City stuff? And the Senate challenges and all the eggs and bones. and Oh, yeah. Sin, you're so quiet. Back in my day. Back in your day. And I was <laughs> trying to show Cato also, remember that weird thing out in the front where there's the three rock areas that when they light up randomly, like every half an hour or so, and if you oh, have three yeah. people standing on it, or I guess you can run them if you're quick enough, an extra secret boss will come out and then you got to kill it quickly. Yeah, I thought that was part of the title, but it's not. It's so. not. I, I just nice. I bring it up because I know Sin and I were going through some extra Dreaming City challenges. We got the title, I mean, like a lot of people fairly early on, and then they were way into the Forsaken expansion, like as soon as all the Senate challenges had looped through and things like that. But the um some of the extra ones was like, eh, I mean, we still don't have the one <laughs> right, Sin, the one where you have to put down the three Titan bubbles for that stupid public event. Yeah. Still we tried that one that. a couple times. Yeah, I mean, you definitely, you definitely need three Titans to be able to cover that thing. Uh, I guess they Maybe... fixed some issues. I'm oh, sorry, I'm going back to the yeah. update. They fixed some seasonal issues. Uh, togetherness is no longer appear as an activity modifier in the coil. Um, yeah, this loud sound with ribbons vendor menu. <laughs> I've never really yeah. noticed that. I don't think I have either. I think I know what they're talking about, but I don't remember it being too loud. Fixed an issue where players are being removed for inactivity while waiting for a revive for more than three minutes. Yep. That's Fixed an issue with a scorching wish perk paired with Well of Radiance could result in a game crash. <laughs> Rodimus, wait, was that, that happening to you? <laughs> that wasn't me. That was getting okay. game crash before. I actually just, uh, I think I had a corrupted file in my Steam folder because I just downloaded, re-downloaded Steam and I've been... You've been Doing good okay, sense. knocking on wood. Good, I hope so, because I know you've been having problems. Issues. So. You know, yeah, so here, here's your Thorn Catalyst. It uh, changed stats from 20 range and 10 stability to 15 range, 5 stability, and 5 airborne effectiveness. So it yeah. looks like you did it for both PvP and PvE. Um... Fixed an issue where the objectives for your Amakar Tales and bonus action triumphs were missing in the Japanese game client. Doesn't affect us. Nothing about the cat being fixed yet. No. And on that point, um, no one, we, people could have gotten the seasonal title this week if that wasn't bugged, but now no one has it because yeah. if you're caught up on everything else except that, you can't get the title yet. So I would thought they would have fixed it in the update that just came out because that was known for at least a few weeks that one but uh, oh well I don't care about the seasonal title we have a long time to get it and right. uh, there's we'll, plenty uh, of time yeah but it's just interesting because the people that do like to get the seasonal titles right away know when it's going to be available and it should have been available this week well, we had a conversation in a chat the other day with some people, like, oh, we have all season. I'm like, no, get it done now. That way you can 
step away from the game and go play other games and not to worry about it because there's a lot to do still mm-hmm. if you're not caught up with it like co- you have to do the coils you have to buy the the gifts from ribbon so yes i love i love this thought process and there's so many reasons why i mean the probably one of the biggest reasons is if you do it later it might be hard to get some things done let's say you're going through coil with the blueberries people might not be as invested it's always easier doing it at the beginning of a season where everyone's trying than later on not saying you won't get it done i mean and then also this season's one of the seasons again where you can't even run the exotic mission until you're halfway through the story so if you were to like put off the story for a while and then you hear about this exotic mission you want to run it like oh you can't until you get halfway through the story a lot more catching up to do then yeah i mean you know people want to like put it off so you know they're not bored later well now you're just bored now anyway so again you might as well just do it now because it's always better to do it sooner rather than later and then you know there will be some things that bungie adds they've told us um you know, we have moments of triumph. We have some weekly missions starting in was it March, and yeah, then I some other drop in April. I mean, we only have 144 more days of the season. Only. <laughs> oh, that make it sound so light. <laughs> Sin, please. They'll do a moments of triumph, and they'll do a drop, and all of a sudden it'll be like Leviathan or Wrath of Machines back. <laughs> Don't threaten me with a good time. It won't be Wrath of the Machine, but I could see Leviathan maybe like a 30% chance coming back. I mean, if they did that and just didn't say anything about it and just say, hey, we're bringing back this raid, like out of the blue, that would be so good for the community. That would be epic, yeah. Epic. Here's, but what, here's hoping. I just don't know... I'm not getting my hopes up, so anything that's awesome will be will be great. But if they were already behind schedule for Final Shape, I mean, maybe they weren't. Maybe it was finished, but then they just wanted to make it better so they could have people happier. So they're like, okay, we'll put more development time into it. But either way, they have to work on it some more. And they've let go of employees. And we know it was like 8% at most, but... With those two things combined, how do they even have time to add more stuff in? It seems like a lot of tech companies, though, are releasing because like Google just got rid of some people. Yeah. But I so. know for sure, like, I even work for a lot of companies, and it's not like things were easy right now, anyways, before they let off people. And now letting off people, it's like, and people, are, and we're hoping that, you know, there will be some cool content coming out in March and April. Maybe there will, but. Let's not get our hopes up too much. It might just be a few missions and this and that, and then we're done, you know, within a little bit of time. I'm just saying, yeah, like, I, I can't I can't fathom how they're going to really be able to develop that much with, uh, with having even less employees now. Goes back yeah. to the age-old question. I mean, we still, I still think it was good that they left Activision. That company was, like, toxic and stuff, but... When they had Activision and when they had multiple sub studios working for them, it wasn't just Bungie. Uh, I said this way back then, even like four or five years ago, however long it's been now. Like, we're watch, we're not going to get as much stuff, <laughs> you know. It's your fault. You jinxed it. Uh, they made the decision. <laughs> <laughs> It's all no, good, though. That's true. It is true. I mean, you think about these huge games out, like uh, the Ubisoft studios that create like the Assassin's Creed games or whatever. I mean, probably like four times at least as big as Bungie. And that's not even the whole Ubisoft studios everywhere, but they have like Ubisoft Montreal working on it, Ubisoft this, Ubisoft that. Yeah. Sub studios, like five different studios working on one game. Do you think um, Bungie releasing a lot of the expansions on Epic was a good move that were free for like that one week? Do you think they're trying to get some more people back because Why of that? What they did there, uh, it was they give like Shadow Keep, Forsaken, like a bunch of it was free. Yeah, 
Um, I mean, I think it's a good move. I don't see why too much detriment to doing that. Except I would way prefer Steam than Epic, but if you didn't have it at all on PC, then I guess you might as well. Yeah, so the Epic. Legacy Collection included Shadowkeep, Beyond Light, and The Witch Queen. Okay. Was free at Epic for a week. Uh, I want to know if anyone took advantage of that. I and don't just... I have everything on Steam, so I don't do Epic. So Exactly. And and I could see like Sin or even me maybe getting it just to have it. Like, but we would never run it on Epic. But has anyone that's listening to this actually even more than likely if you're you're new, you hopped in because of that, or maybe you mostly play on Xbox or PlayStation, but you got it on PC because some of those were included less now. I mean, I did claim it, not going to lie, just to have it in case mm-hmm. I ever want to go to Epic for whatever reason, but I don't play there. I don't even know if I have Epic Link, to be honest with you. I can start a new account and have a alt account. Okay, Gator. Coderson. He Later. claimed it in the chat. Thanks for the live chat update. Do you... Do you um were you already playing on Steam or is this kind of your new thing? Because I'm trying to remember you if you've been playing on PC already or if you were just I know you're doing a PC build, but if you were playing on a console or just an older PC. But anyways, it's interesting that Epic sure does offer a lot of free games to people. Yeah, it's quite nice when they do that. I try to Sim claim will them. often mention those, yeah. I try to claim them whenever I see them pop up just to have them if I ever, you know, get... Oh my God, uh, Sin, you keep popping in and out. I know, I know. I keep moving away from the mic. But in <laughs> case I ever feel like I want to go and play other games, I'll have them there to be able to do that. Yeah, yeah. Coderson is on consoles, so this was a good opportunity to get some of the... It's that much less you need to purchase um, if you were trying to get everything, or maybe you don't even care. You'll have some of those um, legacy packs, and then you'll just maybe buy the new expansion. That's so awesome. To answer your question, Kingsley, yes, you can get a red border weapon randomly through that chest. Yeah. So I just got the scout rifle. Ooh, are you Very still nice. There? Yeah. I'm going to leave Sen. What? Because then I don't have to do the wish wall. <laughs> <laughs> I don't want to do the wish wall, but I'll go backwards. I don't care about that. It'll be interesting to see where it beams me in. Uh, I'm doing for Sin's blind well. Somewhere. well blind I'm, well progression. I'm trying to complete that, the story. I'm not doing blind well no matter what. Even if even if <laughs> Rodimus didn't mention that. <laughs> Good old blind well. You're on your own with the blueberries. <laughs> don't don't be hateful. So I was reading, a, there was an article in Game Rant about Destiny has a perfect blueprint to re, regain its player's trust. In your guys' opinion, who you guys have been playing for a long time, what do you think Bungie needs to do to regain its trust with its players? Well, I guess I want to know what that means about losing trust. Does that mean there's if people those people are not playing at all right now? Because they haven't really lost a lot of trust for me. I'm just a little bit bored. I wish they could always come out with more content. I know there's a lot of backlash with what they with the pushback of uh, the new expansion and stuff. And yeah. Um, their projected was down, but what was confusing, I don't know, we talked about it last last week, and um, but about Steam has still had it rated as one of the, like their top selling games. Yeah, I think that's an easy answer. First of all, um, it, you know, companies work like this too. Like, you can make a lot of money, but if you have a lot of expenses, doesn't mean you're going to do well. And yeah. that was obviously one of the reasons why Bungie had to let some people go. Um, who knows what's going on? So even though they're making a lot of money from things, it's still not enough for what they've been wanting to do. Um, I think, too, if they're you know trying to just... Gosh, I'm not used to going backwards. This is actually a slight <laughs> challenge for me. <laughs> this is fun. Oh, I see. I climbed the rock over on the side. Oh, yeah. I think I might have to do that. I can't go this way, can I? Uh, don't know if you have to. I think you have to climb the, the rock, rock and go atop from the... 
Ah, fuck. The pillars. <laughs> Sorry, podcast. We're still safe. For this is a <laughs> thrilling podcast content right there, right? Hey, this is what we are. We are just flexible talk about whatever. Kingsley's love- doing a sin. <laughs> while, you're doing, while you're spacing out there for a second, I think the biggest thing for them to regain trust would honestly be, you know, when they announce this expansion and then push it back, that I think that loses a lot of ground, right? If they're going to tell us they're going to release something, they need to find a way to push it out on time. Yes, I know that their costs might be high. Yes, they let some people go. That was crappy. And yes, they let people go to save money. But if it was a matter of maybe hiring on another studio to get the content out on time and to be able to help refine the content to get it out by February like they were supposed to, then they should have done that. And I think if they would have actually invested in the community and have done that to keep the keep the game on pace, they might have actually picked up a lot of favor and might have sold more copies of it. Granted, that's not a that's not a uh, you know a a master key to unlock like all of their problems or to fix all of their problems, but I think it would have solved you know quite a bit and kept the trust of the community and kept the game moving forward like it should have. It's interesting you say that, Sin, because I feel like these days a lot more people, especially in other games too, are open to delays. They're like way accepting of delays because they'd rather a game be complete than... And I don't know if there really is just an option to hire another studio because even if you had unlimited money, it's not like a, another studio can spin up that quickly and still get the game done on time. With Apple runs into this problem all the time. Apple's one of the richest companies in the world and there you can hire people but it takes time to still spin that all up and figure it out no and i get that I, I get there's that that time to be able to do that but could they have helped on assets asset creation and had the rest of the studio bungie moving forward on the the main part of the project wouldn't it be easier to like bring on another studio to help with like asset creation and and keep the game moving that way yeah, I I think everyone's just going to have a different opinion on uh on what can be done to regain trust. Um because for me, it's not like there's total trust lost, but for me, I just don't want to be bored in Destiny. I can play other games in the meantime, but while I'm waiting for this big delay, so what would be super cool for me, I don't know if it's necessarily regaining trust, but um I would love kind of like we were saying some really cool drop. I'm not at hardly expecting anything. I, I really, it'll be interesting to talk about this in like four months from now, what we got, but if they could do something that actually does add like a dungeon or kind of like the size of the 30th anniversary drop, which there's no way we're getting that because we had to pay for that. So they're going to give us all that for free. I don't know. But if they could bring back Leviathan raid or something like that, then that would be pretty cool in my eyes. For the yeah, average I player, think that, I don't know I what they could go really a long do. Way. Yeah. The raids would go a long way, honestly, for me. This is bullshit, I think right? the raids will... Wow, well, I'm trying to get back to show you the path, but... Okay, I think I'm getting it. We might have to load out and load back in if it's easier. <laughs> no, no. Um, no. I think the raids would come would go a long way, a long way um, for the, most of the community. I think it's still pretty one of the most things people do in Destiny. Um, yeah, but I'd be curious what they're going to be doing going forward because they were supposedly creating a dedicated crucible team, weren't they? Strike team, the strike team. But here's the thing: with the latest update of all the crucible stuff showing, I actually think crucible is doing pretty well right now. Now, I'm not a crucible player, so maybe people hearing this are laughing right now. But there's a lot of sandbox changes they're making, changes to countdown sparrow control checkmate special ammo changes i know we don't have our extra maps yet and things like that but to me it seems like crucible has been getting some love yeah by the way when was that map pack supposed to be coming uh 2026 yeah did you get your chest already or no (laughs) no i didn't sorry okay do i need to go back one more um i think you're in the right one but i'm in the wrong spot so yeah, you're right above me, so. Are you at it? I am. Brilliant. Yes. 
Okay. Sorry. This is enthralling podcasting. That's like me talking about my blind well experience right now and how I'm getting like. <laughs> All I got was some lousy boots. Oh, right. see, I got yeah. a weapon, so. I know it can be anything. Um, so I was talking to Ronimus about this. I don't think I did on the show, right? But I, um, I've run Last Wish a lot, but I know a lot of people will run backwards to get that chest. But I've never done that. This was the first time doing that. <laughs> I'm only oh, yeah? used to going forward. <laughs> I may have done it one other time, but it's been a long time. I think I tried it the very first time when people found out about that. But like, I was like, eh, I'll just run the raid. I still think there's enough for people to do this season that kind of keep them occupied, um, waiting till all that new stuff comes out. Um, Coil to me is still fun, so it's challenging I... enough. Yeah. It is a good activity. I just feel like um, it's getting... It, it. I like it too. We can. You have to try a little bit, but not too much. As long as you watch those revive tokens, at least you don't have to worry about wiping or there's no timers really. So you can... Mm-hmm. Like Sin and I had to leave for a second. We were running a coil before the podcast and we did platinum, by the way, and did well on all of it. But yeah, it's a good activity for that. I could see... It's definitely one that I don't feel like a slog going in. Um, so that's always... How would you possible. describe that on a difficulty scale? I'd be curious if, I, you, if mm. you're going to use the same analogy it, I used is, the other day. Yeah, it's really interesting because um, it's not really difficult at all other than the revive token thing. So I guess it's it's just communication about, you know, as always, like you don't want to die. And if you do, it's not too noticeable at first but if people start dying more by the time you get to level three or four it's very noticeable unless you're constantly buying revive tokens which are fairly easy to do yeah they're only a uh, hundred of yeah. things i described it the other day as a strike going to a grandmaster as far as difficulty so you're like you yeah. got your normal strike then you got your nightfall hero and you got your nightfall legend your nightfall master then your grandmaster is how i described it as far as the difficulty yeah, it was scaling. Yeah, I would. As far as like the ads, yeah, they got a little toasty at the end. Some grandmasters are still going to be quite a bit more difficult, but it's definitely right around there with like some of these boss arenas. Yeah, I would agree. It's it's fun though. I uh, yeah. Well, I'll tell you what too. We've been having some talks. Um, cato has been heading this up a lot. Um, so people, will, you will eventually see postings in the Owl Sector Alliance 100 bot and potentially other places. But um, there's been a lot more interest in raiding lately, and, and there's still a lot of people that haven't done raids. So we will be slowly starting the Sherpa raids again. And we'll probably just do whatever the weekly featured raid is, just to keep it easy that way. So um, I know Cato's heading up a few just kind of behind the scenes for people that are really interested. But ultimately, they will be getting posted also to the 100 bot for fill-ins for people. So I think that's pretty cool. So that is going to be a way we're going to be spending, you know, the next few months also helping with radio. Very nice. Unfortunately, I think this first one's on a Friday, so I'm my Friday I, schedule, I won't be able to yeah, join. I think we're going to probably, unfortunately, mostly do it on Fridays, which is good for a lot of people, but I understand not everyone. Right. (laughs) So good luck to anybody who joins. (laughs) Well, also, too, if you need help or need a Sherpa, you can reach out. Oh, yeah. Nothing has to be on a Friday. There are other days of the week that can work for most of us that can help. Yes. Yeah. Yeah. And this this is talked about in the episode coming out, too. But, like, create a posting, uh, reach out, um, look for other postings. But... At least if you create one and say, I need help, I need some Sherpas, then it's probably even fairly likely that'll fill up pretty easily because, yes, not as many people have been posting once just for the general area, general public, but if you were to create one, you're the person that needs the help, um, it's likely to kind of kickstart some interest. And if you're worried about posting it, you can always um, DM me or anyone else. We can get it started for you. If you're yep. afraid of posting, don't be, I don't want to look like a fool or an idiot. There's uh, DM one of us. We'll post it for you. Yep. We'll save you a spot and, and or talk to the collective group and get you a run. 
Yeah. What's your live update, Sin? Blind well. Yeah. <laughs> Why'd you ask? <laughs> My face like puckers up when I hear that word blind well. <laughs> like I don't you really want to be in here, but I have to do it for the uh weekly stuff. Seasonal quest, yeah. Oh yeah, of course. No one wants to be in there. <laughs> Would you rather do a blind well or a Vogue raid? I'd rather oh, do a Vogue raid. Oh, you might, you love Vogue though. Uh, so I did run that recently. It's been quite a while, and um, a couple of nights ago, I forget when, um, with Bell, a bunch of other people, I forget all who was in it. Um, I should look up my raid report here so I can give some shout outs. And um, it was okay. It was refreshing to run a Vault of Glass again. Uh, it's just so boring, at least until the end. And then we had fun, and we actually did quite well for what I was curious to see how we would do. Let's see here. Oh, do you know, by the way, Santa, I have 917 raid clears. How many do I have? I don't know. First, I'm looking this up <laughs> for Vaulted Glass. More than me. Okay, ran it with... All right, of course, Coderson, Bell, HD Tech, Native Raider, and Zebrek. Was this the uh, shirtless uh, drunk raid? No, 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 no. Oh, this was just a regular <laughs> raid. Yeah, it was just a just a little kind of a last minute thing. Mostly organized in in Blueberry Lounge, I believe. We were doing some other things that night, and we kind of broke off. And then we did have the comms over in TGH, but um, it was good to give some more um, teaching on on that raid and stuff. You know, it's interesting. I kind of, um, we didn't have a well at all. Um, we could have, but I didn't want to run it. And then I wasn't sure. We might have even had one other warlock and they didn't want to run it. We're like, let's just see. Wow, we don't no need well, it. huh? Yeah, but we did fine. And here's the, here's my tip again. I remember, even though I don't like doing Vault of Glass or Sherpering that one as much, the thing I remember towards the end was, um, Okay, at the very beginning of the raid, everyone was doing the... Oh, yeah, Bell was the other Warlock, and he didn't run... Um, Bell's been doing Warlock lately. He's been having fun with it, actually, so he claims. Um, at the he's very only having fun with it, because he's got to get all of his stuff for it. Yeah. At the very beginning of Vaulted Glass, we were always doing damage in the middle, remember, Sin? And, of course, that was the D1 strat, was always in the middle. Then later right. on, we started doing out the sides, mostly because... If you can get closer to the boss, there's some cool strats you can do with grenades. That's how it first started. And then, of course, other weapons have some good range on him. But then we learned to get on Master. You got to do it in the middle for safety. Uh, I mean, you don't have to, but it's much easier in the middle. Makes than it on... easier. Yeah. But then I learned also, if you're sherping new people through it, it's still also easier for them in the middle. I can't tell you how many times, even on normal... We're going up to the side by the portals and people die or get pushed through the portal or the imminent detain traps us or whatever. So I, we had a few newer people. I'm like, let's just try the middle. And even without the well, it was very easy to stay alive in the middle. It worked out well. Very That's nice. cool. Yeah. It's kind of my thinking on this is the lower end and then the higher end, you want to do it in the middle. <laughs> That makes sense because on master you definitely want to do it in the middle, and if you're bringing some newer people through, you want to do it in the middle. And then if you're like, you know, just in the middle range experience or whatever, doing it on normal, you can certainly do the sides. So I don't know. Some people may not agree with that, but I think that's a cool tip. Well, I think every favorite. no matter what raid you do, everyone's gonna have their own ways of doing it. Yeah, of course. Five hundred and forty-four total raid clears for me. Pleb. <laughs> <laughs> what's your does it also say your top two percent where do i see that it it like shows up sometimes it is a little hard to find i okay hover over full clears rank where it says like diamond and it'll tell you in some text above that oh yeah top two percent yeah i'm top two percent kato's top two percent so and I think he also has like 500 and something also. So it really shows like between 500 and 900 clears, it's still top 2%. I wonder how many clears you have to be to be top 1%. 2,000. <laughs> so uh, 
fun fact, I actually have not done Master Crota runs at all for the title. Have you end up did you end up doing yours? No, I do not have interest. Uh Crota was a good raid and it still is a good raid, but I've been a little less try hard lately. That's why I really appreciate kind of Cato and others taking the rein for organizing some of these things and I'll definitely get this the this last raid done and have fun with it. Well, we'll see. Maybe they'll make more raids down the road. But um, for whatever reason, I did not have the desire to do Master on Crota or get the title. You know, we did Ron. That was fun enough. Ron was fairly easy for us that had experience. I mean, sure, we had a, we still had to try in some of those encounters a bit. But Crota, I just didn't have the desire. Do you have the desire, Sin? I mean, I know you didn't have the time, but... Yeah, if if somebody were to help organize it and get the uh, crew together to do it, I wouldn't mind going and doing it just to get it done. Um, is it a must? No, it's not a must. Yeah. Yeah, maybe. I mean, yeah, if there's a crew that's coming together and they need one. Actually, I do think I joined one Master Encounter. With the crew. Yeah. I have the first encounter done on Master because they were short one and I just came to fill in. But oh, nice. I think if I really pushed it, I could have like taken that spot going forward, but I didn't really care. So they just brought the other p- person back the next week. It was fine. I mean, I don't know. I just... That first encounter is BS. I have so... no interest. Yeah. Yeah, I actually kind of like the end part of Crota. I really like the uh, Iryut and uh, and Crota encounters are fun enough. But Bridge is just, I mean, it's so much better than D1, but it's just kind of long and unnecessary in a way. And then, of course, the the Underworld area is just total BS. (laughs) So long. And on Master, it's, oh my gosh, it's so annoying. Yeah, I mean... A lot of the master content gets a little obnoxiously hard at some points, but but on normal too, it's like this is like one of those raids, especially if if you're bringing several new people through, that it's like harder and then it gets easier as it goes along, because <laughs> that's first encounter. If you have several new people, you'll be in there for a long time. I know you don't love it either, right, Rodimus? <laughs> no. Yeah, the stills, whatever. Oh, gross. Yep, and then people running ahead, people behind, just, <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Sin running ahead and is assuming someone's with you and then you're <laughs> timing out. <laughs> hey, this is a last wish. Oh, I can pace myself sometimes. Yeah, but you didn't pace yourself and no one was with you. <laughs> <laughs> oh. Well, good talks on all that. Uh, what else do we have this week? We'll talk about story next week the last week of that and then whatever else comes up we will have i guess a twid so yeah i finally be, will be you done with blind so, well by then too you'll be oh you're, it'll take you all the way till next week <laughs> it'll feel like it yeah i might not play again until next week so if i don't get it done tonight who knows oof that's rough you not have like any time on sundays just to play on your own well, I think the uh, it's just lack of motivation and people on to play with, and yeah, the stuff that I really want to do is like the legend, the legend um, exotic mission. Like I wouldn't. Well, if you're gonna that. make it worth your while, wait till it's all done and get like do all the quest lines for each week, then just do the exotic mission. What? Yeah, over. To check yeah. That off. Yeah. Are all four out now? I only have three no, in my one inventory. More week. One more week. And two of the thing, or one of the things to shoot is out in the open world, which I think you did. Two are in the dungeon, so you can queue those up, and we don't know where the fourth one will be yet. And then, yeah, like Radimus has said, once you shoot those four things, you can just run it once and then get the callus for all that. And the chests also, you can kind of queue all that up. I've still kind of enjoyed, it's so funny, like even though I don't love this exotic mission, I kind of like running it on Legend and it, to kind of hone my skills some more. And um, funny enough, Cato, me, and Dice have been running that 
almost every week, just coincidentally. So I know we didn't have to, but we ran it again this week. And then uh, obviously we'll run it again next week just to get it done. Very nice. It's fun. It can be annoying at times, but it's still, it's still nice. Yeah, it's not too terribly bad. It's, And I actually think the boss arena is not too hard. It's almost easier than some of the other arenas because at least it's enclosed and you have some cover on the right. You know, pro tip, indebted kindness on those arc harpies is beautiful. One to two shots them um, so easily. And, and I don't like any the, of the uh, sidearm, right? Yeah, that's the rocket sidearm. Um, there's been some cheeses. Uh, it's still there's still kind of a cheese you can use. Wish Ender back a little bit further, where before you could be like right up on it and use any anti barrier thing. But I just like to go in it and actually do it legit because the cheeses can take way more time. Um, just taking it down, so it is what too it bad. is. But it's not too bad, yeah. Well, we have so much fun to look forward to in Destiny. But actually, Moments of Triumph is not too bad. There there can be some cool things in there. And uh, I think... Use your t-shirt from it. Yeah, dude. Is that even something that's supposed to be starting in, did they say, like February? Or do we have any kind of a roadmap here? I don't know that we do. I don't think... We'll probably find out too, or next week, maybe with the twin. Yeah. Maybe lay out the roadmap a little bit. Yep. Let us know what is happening. Do what kind of stuff they did over break, if they were working during break or not. Yeah. Yeah, I know in the release update post... Um, uh, okay, here we go. They did tell us a little bit. Oh, it's February is when they're going to start the weekly progression-based quests called Wishes. I thought that was in March. So, I mean, gosh, we're halfway through January, right? Sin, you couldn't believe we're mid-January already, so... February now who knows they could saying that they could be an end of February but anyways in February we'll have weekly progression based quests called wishes and launch moments of triumph so yeah that's what I was also thinking and then Guardian Games is going to be in March and then in April is the two month content update into the light whatever yeah, that'll be we'll see we'll see how it goes Yep. Um, and part of me thinks they pushed it back to see if we're going to... I think this is the pilot for their new model going forward after mm -hmm. um, with the episodes. I wonder if this is like their test run. Like what would be the new model? Just the time of year they're having things come out? or Yeah, or like else? not the time of the year. We know they're not doing like seasons. They're doing yeah episodes. episodes. Mm -hmm. I wonder if they're, they're trying that with this. Mm-hmm. And then in April, along with the uh, that um, Into the Light thing, they're going to give us the main Final Shape reveal in April. Mm -hmm. Like the bigger trailer and whatever video and stuff like that. You know, we got the teaser one, but... So, I mean, gosh, next thing... I mean, you know, I was talking about taxes and everything. I mean... <laughs> This everyone was saying that the last year went quick. So before we know it, we'll be in April, right? We'll have all the content we're going to get for this season. We'll have a big update what's with final shape, and then we just have to wait till June. So I actually think May could be the worst month. Well, known because it's a two month into the light thing, April and May. So if it's good content, May could be good too. There you go. And then we will be in the light. <laughs> we'll be in the traveler. <laughs> Same difference. <laughs> Same difference. Oh my gosh! And now I want to talk about the final story, cutscene, and everything. Oh, I don't know how close I am. I got to witness. It's not that exciting, actually. <laughs> but still, a, a a thing happened, which we already kind of know because, like you said, they're trying to figure out a way for Crow to get there, but. Yeah. Basically, Trump there was the just bench. a cut scene where Crow went through a portal. <laughs> what is that it? number are you on? Oh, hold on. I'm witnessing a conversation right now. Ooh, you witnessed that. 40, 48 of 55. Got a little bit to go. You got a little bit to go. But yeah, it's Crow, 
we got our final wish and all that did was open some portal that crow went through and then mara's eyes lit up assuming she has a link with crow now but it didn't show us anything and then they're like now we have that link and osiris can figure out what to do stay tuned till june (laughs) they didn't say that part but you know (laughs) they might as well just have put that in a little subtext (laughs) <laughs> yeah, sorry, I had to say it. <laughs> so it's not continue? really a spoiler because we're kind of it was all stuff we were expecting, anyways. <laughs> it's like the Marvel movies to be continued. Yeah, to be continued. To be continued. 144 day countdown right at the bottom of the screen. Hard locked <laughs> on every activity Can you, you play. That? Yes, hard locked at every activity, or at least the tower. But yeah, every activity. <laughs> we're in raids. We're like trying yeah. to do stuff. It's like going over the the callouts of like above the super part. Get what, off the screen. This, I don't want to know how many this, days. This is 144 minute or 144 day timer at. Why is it always here? <laughs> That'd be hilarious. Comes up every minute on your screen as an announcement, like a little scroll bar right in the middle. <laughs> oh my god, you're making it worse. <laughs> <laughs> no, it's like one of those bouncy things, like the old DVD screensavers, like going in the corners, doink, doink, Uh-oh. you know, like, like that, back and forth. <laughs> Bungie, if you're listening, this is not a Bungie, please, by the way. Do not add that. It is not a Bungie, please. Nope. <laughs> and watch, they will do it because they don't do the Bungie, pleases. So <laughs> we'll do this one. <laughs> no, but we love the game, and they're, they'll ultimately be lots more to talk about and we will no doubtly be talking about other things in the upcoming weeks other games we're playing movies tv shows let us know what you want to talk about also and we still have a few more guest ideas on the short list to get on the show good times good times all around well with that let's close up wrap it up ship it out Shape up or ship out? Is that how it works? That is how it works. Hey, we want to thank uh, the patrons that we have. um, Well, the patrons in our Patreon channel. Uh, We really appreciate you guys. Let's uh, give some shout-outs here. Two, we got Jockey Music. No, I'm just kidding. (laughs) (laughs) Which one? The first one or the second one? (laughs) Two of them now. Oh, but one is set as ambassador. I'm trying to remember why we did that. Do we even need that as an ambassador? We don't need any more. We were okay. trying to figure something out. Yeah, so we'll you change don't need that. To. We'll change that. We got Dorath. We got Salt. We got Coderson. Shout out. You're also listening to the show live. All Thumbs, Average D2 Player, Cloud Dembula, Danger Powers, Fiery Pink Yoda, Grackle, Hey Yoka, Kato. I believe Kato. Now you're also, you could be in here because of... um. I think you were a patron anyways. Um, Metal. Uh, we got Sweaty, Mr. Monkey, Peaky Blinders, a.k.a. Panda. We got Philip, uh, a.k.a. Fuck Up. And we got Scoot. <laughs> 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 so shout out to all you lovely people. Uh, you too can uh, join the patron for just a few bucks a month. Really at one level, just keeping it simple over here, but it does help with some of the bots we pay for and such. You will get a special channel where we can't promise how much we will talk, but you can. we can promise name changes for Sin or me or other admins. You can join. I'll join that. Crazy. Exactly. There you go. I mean, I'm just kind of joining Cato into that plan also. Yeah, so. You don't have a choice. <laughs> mm-hmm. Hey, if you're going to be an admin, you, you don't have a choice. <laughs> Right, right, right. Oh, man, we're gonna have fun with that then. Yes, sin. Your your latest name in the Discord. Shameful sin. Shame, shame, shameful sin. Hey, we gave already him that know. name. Yeah, who came up with that? It wasn't in Patron Channel. No, Patreon. I think it was a joke at the time. Yeah, because you were sin breaker of recordings. I think it had to do with the conversation of us not having the bit, losing the bit. We had the bit, but losing the bit on the uh, 80s movie, um, you know, Gremlins thing. And then people were saying, shame to sin for losing it. (laughs) Shame, shame, shame. Shame. By the way, I did tag in that here in the Patreon or the, uh, wait a minute. That's the wrong oh, channel. Hold on. That's the wrong channel. That was the admin and password oh channel. Sin. Where's the uh, Where's the right one? 
Oh, Jinx. <laughs> oh, man. I'll find it. Hold on. <laughs> I'm making the post now. What are you making the post of? What I what we just said? Yeah. Yeah. Just to remind people in there. Yeah. <laughs> Dead air. Dead air. That's it. You can change Cato and uh-huh. Problemist's name with your perks also. <laughs> A thr- thrilling podcast material. I also uh, removed the ambassador tag from the first Jockey Music Pod. <laughs> Ooh, we're rocking and rolling now. Guardian Hub 3.0. Hey, that Jackie music bot's awesome. Yeah. Catch Except it up. for when one you task first come time. in, it's like full blast. Yes. Oh, yes. Oh, Anyways, man. Rodimus, thanks for joining. Uh, oh, no problem. People can find you as Rodimus all over, including where else? Uh, here, GDC, anywhere, the Owl Sector Alliance. Yep. Um, the Space Mafia Space boys Mafia. and myself are doing a test run on Tuesday, so we'll keep you informed how that goes. So. All right. Sounds excellent. Test run on what? Taking over the world? No, we're going <laughs> to um, do a podcast. So. Yes. Yeah, I mean, I knew that, but wasn't sure if other people did. But it will not be a Destiny podcast, so... It will be a overall Bethany gaming podcast. No, overall gaming. Chance? We're going to talk about what we're doing, like what yeah. games we're playing, because with it being um, a dead game, you got to kind of move on. So, <laughs> so you you can uh, give all your Destiny love here, and then <laughs> yes, absolutely, save the dead game over there. <laughs> <laughs> For shame, Rodimus yes. is the new shame. <laughs> Uh, yeah. Well, cool, cool. Uh, Sin, where can people find you? The huge, mainly the Discord, next to all you lovely gents. That is all. Kingsley, take it out. All right, you can find me as Kingsley next to all the lovely gents, except for Sin. (laughs) You can find information about our show, all the different ways to listen to us, the How huge. to join the Patreon. The huge, like you said, the huge. Where do you go for that huge? You go to www.theguardianhub.com. www.thebesthub on the net. Mm, don't go there, though. <laughs> Why not? You might not like what you find. Yeah. Do I got to buy that domain now, too, Sin? <laughs> <laughs> the best hub on the net. Uh, probably. Yeah, I should actually. It might be good marketing, <laughs> good analytics. Now I did save the Al Sector Alliance domain or whatever, and uh, I still not have done nothing with it. So should it be the best hub on the net dot com or the best hub on the net dot net? <laughs> the best hub dot net. <laughs> there you go. Or it could be the best hub on the dot net. <laughs> yes. But then it doesn't flow as well, but that would make probably the most sense. It just doesn't flow when you're reading it with the dot. Right. But The best hub.net, I think, is what you should do. Mm, I'll definitely take ideas here, dude, because a domain yearly is dirt cheap. I don't mind paying the 15 bucks a year or whatever I can get for this, and I'll have it redirect to our main website. So we need to figure this go. out quickly. So when you Google the best hub on the net, it pulls up a Popular Mechanics uh, article. Interesting. The best smart home hubs. Huh. But if I actually have the domain, that will start ranking in yes. Google Analytics. Uh, maybe not right away, but it can. So um, we'll figure this out. And we will it, announce on the show what we decided. Okay, can you get a t-shirt made that says best hub on the net? We do. We definitely do. Because you really don't... Because <laughs> I mean, we do have the t-shirt, but like, if we have the domain best hub on the dot net or the best hub dot net then when people go there maybe they're not sure what it's they're thinking one thing but then they can see us <laughs> good just buy them all just buy all the domains there you go Sam, then i won't have any money to send your way uh, it's okay so you, don't, so you don't lose a podcast <laughs> i don't see it anyway <laughs> <laughs> you could if you wanted i offered <laughs> Uh, all right. 
we got that. Thank you, everyone. Thanks for tuning in again this week. Uh, we love you all so much, and we will catch you all again next week. Have a good one. Bye. Bye.